Dear friends, welcome to the Eastern Front Channel. On the eve of the battle for Berlin, the Smirsch military counterintelligence agencies were tasked with finding and arresting Hitler and other leaders of Nazi Germany. After the capture of the Führerbunker on May 2, 1945, and the detention by the Smirsch authorities of the SS men, who were in the bunker and tried to escape from Berlin, a painstaking collection of information about the possible locations of all the top leaders of the Third Reich began. Among the witnesses of the last days of the Nazi Führer were personal pilot, commander of the Führer squadron Hans Bauer, and some sources, translators mistakenly listed as Hans Bauer. Today we will continue to study the testimony of Hitler's personal pilot from the declassified archives of the FSB of Russia. You can also get acquainted with other parts of the interrogation on our channel. So let's continue. Page 5. Around April 18, Field Marshal Keitel and Colonel General Jodl left because the catastrophe became obvious and it was necessary to organize all forces to protect Berlin. They left for help after Hitler categorically stated that with his participation a decisive battle would be given in Berlin and that he himself would share the fate of Berlin and stay here. Before that, we still hoped that someone close to Hitler would be able to persuade him to leave the city, but everything was unsuccessful. Then they began to send everything possible from Berlin in a hurry. I had to use all my planes. Every night, four to five planes loaded with cases, luggage, and people flew from Berlin to Berchtesgaden. The most difficult thing was to keep in touch with the planes and get them back. The sending of archives and documents was supervised by Obergruppenführer Schaub, Hitler's personal aide-de-camp. He also burned Hitler's personal documents in the courtyard of the Imperial Chancellery. I carry out the sending of aircraft from the airfields of Schoenwald and Gaitov. Around 17 or 18 April a message was received that this airfield would be occupied in the near future. The planes had to be transferred to the Gatov and Recklin airfield because the order to blow up the buildings had already been given. Already on April 20 I received a report that the airfield was ready to be shelled by tanks. Hitler twice ordered me to leave Berlin, but I refused saying that I would stay with him until the end, and maybe he would need me. To this he said to me, No bar, I will stay here and I don't need you. But I asked his permission to stay which he allowed me to do. I was instructed together with Aviation General Muller to ensure the defense of the Gatov airfield. Air traffic from this airfield ceased on April 24. General Muller stayed there until the last moment and then shot himself in Potsdam. One Condor plane remained at the airfield, although I gave the order to bring it to the city of Recklin. I don't know why this was not done. We had high hopes for the army group of Walter Wank. General Walter Wank was to attack the Americans on the Elbe. He was closest to Berlin. The troops were very well armed. An appeal was sent to Himmler and Grand Admiral Dönitz to provide all possible forces to defend Berlin. Dönitz immediately sent 800 soldiers who arrived partly by plane. The radio communication of the Supreme Headquarters was acting badly. The antenna was constantly being destroyed by artillery fire. Mormon on April 18 to 20 transmitted several radio messages to Himmler about the plight of Berlin and Hitler. He asked to take all measures because the fate of the Führer and therefore the whole case is being decided. There was no response to the radio messages, but 24 managed to contact Himmler by phone and he suggested that we hold on. Page 6. The movement of Wenck's army to Berlin was stopped by Russian troops, who gathered large forces against his group and dreams that Walter Wenck would be the liberator of Berlin collapsed. General Wadling, General Bergdorf, S. of Brigadefuhrer Gonk, and Bormann reported to Hitler about the military situation. One of the U-52 planes that took off with the archives on April 20 at 4 a.m. was captured by the British and planted in the city of Cologne, I don't understand how this happened. The commander of the plane, Major Gundelfinger, should have definitely informed me by a special radiologist that the British fighters had captured him. At 9 o'clock on the evening of April 22, Colonel von Bolov informed me that Hitler had summoned Colonel General Schoerner to his office. He should be at 10 o'clock. At 12 o'clock in the morning, being with Adjutant Schaub in the kitchen of Fräulein Marchenau, Hitler's diet cook, Schoerner came to us. We drank coffee together. He greeted Shub as an old acquaintance and told us. I was with the Fuhrer for an hour. The situation is really desperate. 
but it is also wrong to lose hope of coping with him. If the plan is implemented as the Fuhrer told me, then you will break out of the encirclement. I often got into such predicaments and I'm still alive. He stayed with us for half an hour and then flew away in his hangle. Hitler told me about Schirner. Schirner is a good fellow, a real man. If I listened to all these complaints of officers, I would have to punish him constantly, but for his successes at the front you cannot pay attention to his shortcomings. Obergruppenfuhrer Schaub flew the very next day along with part of the archives to Berchtesgaden. Professor Moral Hitler's personal physician was sent by the last plane on April 24. Moral absolutely could not stand the bombing and artillery shelling and nervous seizures were made with him. Minister Ribbentrop left Berlin at the very beginning of April. His representative under Hitler, Ambassador Heuvel called him daily by phone. On the 15th of April, Hevel announced that his minister wanted to command a battalion or a company of the Volkssturm, but Hitler did not allow him to do so. Admiral Boss came to us with the same report. Grand Admiral Eric Rader asked to give him the opportunity to actively participate in the last battle, but Hitler also did not give him consent to this. When the situation got even worse, Hitler's aide-de-camp Willie Johann Meyer was sent to General Wank on April 27. He is an experienced infantryman who was awarded the Order of Oak Leaves to the Knight's Cross. Together with him went the Bandfuhrer Hitler Youth Lawrence. The next day Hitler's adjutant von Belov left in the same direction and with the same tasks. He informed us that he had reached Potsdam and demanded a plane from Recklin. I got the impression that he was acting on his own initiative, trying to get out of the encirclement. Dear friends, that's all for today. It was Tim and goodbye.